Oh, thank you for coming to uh, your computer. Um, this is uh, an event we're doing with Louise Neal, the author of Snowflake. Louise is a Kildare native. Snowflake is her first novel. It was the number one bestseller in Ireland and an award-winning novel, very highly praised, and we're very happy to have her here with us today. I'd like to thank NUIM and Kildare County Council for making this event possible. Um, so today we're going to, Louise is going to do a reading from her, her wonderful novel, Snowflake, and then I'm going to ask her some questions and then we're going to have some audience participation. And that includes the participants online, if you'd like to put any questions in the chat or anything like that. Uh, we'll get to those at the end. Okay, so thank you for coming and Louise, take it away, please. Uh -huh. Thank you, Oshin Fagan. Uh, oh yeah, I'm Oshin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, fun fact, me and Oshin went to school together, so this is really uh, bizarre and lovely that uh, we're able to an event together. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit from uh, Snowflake, the book. Um, it's a book about um, a girl called Debbie who's 18 years old and she's from the countryside in uh, Kildare. And she gets into Trinity and her mom's a bit mad and um, she believes that she can dream other people's dreams. Um, her mom's name is Maeve and Debbie is kind of like a really strained relationship with Maeve, but she really gets on with her uncle Billy who lives in a caravan in a field at the back of her house. Um, and the scene that I'm going to read or chapter I should say um, is called Milk Bath. So Debbie um, takes the milk bath um, to stop um, dreaming basically. <clears throat> I'm afraid to go to sleep. I want to go and knock on the caravan door, but I'm not a kid anymore. I need to stop searching for the full moon from my bedroom window. I try to disappear into my phone, but the internet is slow. The cool side of the pillow makes me feel like my head is floating on water. Then I remember the time mom gave me a milk bath. I creak downstairs and put on one of Billy's coats over my pyjamas. I open the back door and feel the relief of the night's wind in my face. The torch on my phone lights up the calf shed and it makes it look like a silver castle. I grab the can and empty and an empty bleh, I grab the can and an empty bucket. The milk comes out in a twirl of silk and smacks the bottom of the bucket. I feel someone grab my elbow and turn around to find a calf sucking on my arm. It retreats to the back of the pen. I stretch out my hand and wiggle my fingers on. He comes forward again, head bowed, and smells me. Finally, he gives the tips of my fingers a lick and lets me slide them into his mouth. The suckling gets rougher the more frustrated he becomes when my fingers don't squeeze out the milk he's looking for. It's warm in there. I can feel the ridges along the roof of his mouth. I pull out my hand. Saliva stretches across it, webbing my fingers together. The bucket lags against my leg weighing me down as I carry it towards the back door. In the field, one of the cows is bawling. I shine the torch over and see that she's down on her knees, calving. The calf is still in the amniotic sac. I know that's bad. Usually the pink balloon bursts and dangles from the cow's tail for a few hours until it splats onto the ground for Jacob to come along and eat it. I watch the cow push the sack out of her like it's, it's a giant squid. It slides out onto the grass in a slimy bubble. All it needs is a prod or a poke and it will pop. I know that I should call Billy, but I wouldn't be able to explain why I, what, I wouldn't be, be able to explain why I was out in the air at this hour. I'm so tired that I'm not even sure it's happening. I take the stairs slowly, trying not to slosh any milk over the sides. I fill the bath with hot water and tip the milk in. It spreads like smoke underneath the water. A bunch of dried lavender floats on its surface, their stalks overlapping. Mom used, to, Mom used to use the pretty white headed weeds from the garden that looked like sprigs of baby's breath, but they gave me a rash. Once, when I had a really bad dream, Mom gave me a milk bath. I woke her by climbing into her bed and brushing my cold feet against her sleeping legs. There was a moment when I held my breath as she opened her eyes, but she didn't give out to me. She ushered me out of the bed and led me to the bathroom where I was given orders to strip off while she got milk from the calf shed. I stood in the quiet of the early morning on the cold tiles of the bathroom floor and watched the water gush out of the taps. 
My arms crossed over my flat chest. Fresh ripples of goosebumps rose in waves over the back of my neck. The bruised light made everything blue. Mom came back in with a heavy bucket of milk and a fistful of daisies from the garden. I turned them over in the bath and watched as their white umbrellas bobbed upside down on the water, the tips of their petals tinged with purple. She tried to teach me how to hold my breath underwater. I lasted half a second before coming back up and thrashing water out of the bath. She shoved my head back under again, but I bit her finger. Then she dragged me out by the hair and un unplugged the bath. I watched the drain swallow the heads of my daisies. Are you happy now? She shouted, her bark echoing off the bathroom walls. I was howling. Keep your head under the water, she ordered. It will help you with the dreams. So I tried harder. I stayed underwater until hot colours flickered and scorched holes in my eyes. When I emerged from the water, my throat was on fire, but Mam was in a good mood again. She collected the daisies' spongy yellow centres and rubbed them in circles on my back. Then she tailed me dry in rough, swift movements. You'll have, you'll have a great night's sleep after this, she said, her breath tickling the hairs on the inside of my ear. A great night's sleep. And she was right. The dreams went away after the milk bath. The milky water burns my toe, then my foot until it reaches my chin and makes a lake around my neck. The cream rises to the top of the bath and little white islands congeal on the surface. Shapes of steam rise out of the bathtub and I wrap the chain of the plug tighter and tighter around my big toe until it hurts just the right amount. I stay in the water bow-legged until I have the shriveled fingertips of a wise old woman. My knees are chilly from being out of the water. I play at being a corpse in a coffin or a naked bride, clutching the bunch of lavender to my chest. I brush the bouquet up and down my body, twisting around to get at the backs of my legs, stroking all of my skin. The flowers tickle my face. I'm in the shower, rinsing the milk out of my hair when I let myself cry. It's a relief, a comfort, like touching my body before I go to sleep to make sure I'm still there, still me, still alive. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> Can we have any guests as well? Good job. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a very fun chapter. And I haven't no, read, it's fun. We can... I haven't read that um, bit before. But, um, yeah, it was brilliant. It was fantastic. Thanks, Oshie. No, it was... Um, so I, I suppose what it comes... I kind of... There's in your book, and I actually haven't really seen this in Irish writing, ever is you see the kind of agricultural stuff which is very honest which is like the cows are being born inside out and they're covered in ticks and it's this disgusting thing then you have the kind of trinity stuff and you kind of have this other nature as well which is like more herbal more mystical and stuff like that how did i mean i'm asking you how did you write the book but how did this all come together this these milk baths and these this lavender and these daisies and stuff like that. I don't see that so much in writing. Yeah, um, I it took me ages. I, I see that bit like the um, kind of magical bit at the center of the book. That was the biggest headache for me writing writing the book. Yeah, it could have been just a completely like realist narrative. Yeah, and part, like it it is, but at the heart is like a. I will never say magical realism because it's not magical realism because I magical realism is a term that other people invented to fetishize like Isabel E and A and, mm. and like all oh, like South South American writers and and, and culture and um for for Snowflake I was advised so many times to get rid of the dreams like to get rid of like that concept who are these people <laughs> So by people that I really really admire and uh and like part of it was like me just not doing it like well enough so like um a lot of the feedback I got was like okay it's, it's great it's great until the dreams come and then they maybe like ruin the party really? <laughs> so it took me like several like so much work to try and make it seem uh like it would work and I still like it's still uh something like before we started today you were like so like what about the dreams and i was like oh they're a metaphor or whatever yeah and you're like don't tell me that like you're you're getting rid of all the magic and i am yeah and it's because like we live in like 
We live in such a cynical society, man. We do, yeah. It's sort of very <laughs> And like, uh, like when I'm trying to like sell the book or market the book or like do interviews, it's so difficult to talk about like that side of it. Yeah. It's so much easier to say, oh yeah, it's a novel set in Trinity and yeah. her mom's a bit mad and she's from a farm. Yeah, it's about mental health. It's about mental yeah. health. But like the reason, like I, I mean, it is about mental health because I don't like the words mental health and um yeah and like anytime uh like I I always say that I, I wrote for my 18 year old self because I felt really really overwhelmed at Trinity yeah um we were we were in Trinity around the same time we at the same time at the same time yeah I was in your class. <laughs> she doesn't remember me. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> we actually did. We did English and French <laughs> together. There's Rebecca Pizza. This is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did English and French together. Yeah. But you, I, I dropped. I dropped out. Yeah. And then you, like, we were in each other's ears. But then I dropped out three years later. Yeah. And then I came back. So we ended up in fourth year together as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's what happened. But that's such a blur because I'm like, I just remember just being like really overwhelmed and uh, and just like my mental health just went down the shitter. But um, the th the stuff that I like reading really took me out of that. Took me out of like a like a, a by reading dark stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, other people are a bit mad as well. What did you read? Um, all of the stuff, like you know, like real pretentious stuff. So, like it's all right. You know, we're in university. <laughs> you don't need to do it here. You're allowed. Like, I don't exactly what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you do write a book, but in university, you can say anything. Like I, I loved, I loved George Eliot. Like I loved uh, Jane Austen. Yeah. Um, and like there's like the Brontes, all that stuff is like really, really dark. Yeah. And uh, and I I wasn't expecting like I've I've always been obsessed with Alison Wonderland, so uh, and that's something that's in the book as well. But um, like I can't I can't even remember half the books I read. Yeah. Do you get that as well when you're when you're trying to remember books that you've read, but you can't even remember the characters' names, and it's really embarrassing. No, I, well, I don't get embarrassed. I get really embarrassed. I, if I got embarrassed, I wouldn't be doing what I do. That's, you know what I mean? That's true. You, I'd say, I don't know, I feel like you probably don't. You probably say you get more embarrassed than you do. If you really got embarrassed, you wouldn't have written a book this wonderfully fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so funny and it's so dark. And it is unapologetically itself. And then, I don't know. But the books I read, I, all the books I read when I was 18 or 19, I remember everyone. And now the books I read this year, which is like, they're just, it's just a pile of, it just, it's gone. Yeah. It's like you got dementia yeah. or something. It's like every, I remember being 18 or 19 because your emotions are so high and you're like, oh my God, Dostoevsky. You have oh to my God, this. Tolstoy. Oh my God. And you're just, they're having all these emotions and then kind of older you get, it's more like, almost like work actually, the, yeah. the stuff you're reading. And then it just kind of blurs into one. Yeah. You know, so then you remember when there's a good book, you really remember it. But like, I don't even... Remember, I don't even look at titles now when I read. I'm just like, you know, I don't remember any of the characters. It's just like, it's like a skill set almost. I want to, I want to revise that answer. I just, uh, when I said that I read like the Brontes and uh, and George Eliot and and all, I was just like, I panicked and just picked uh, books that I, I'm I was like, they intimidated. would be, <laughs> they would be books in the library, and I was like, okay, those books. I gen, I genuinely can't remember what I what I read. Are you afraid like Miss Butler will watch this and she'd be like, she read it with me? <laughs> <laughs> And then Trinity is dead and all the around at the same time as Miss Butler. But uh, <laughs> nobody knows what we're talking about. Right, this is uh, it's gone local. Yeah, it's gone but local. this is our local university. We went out in the news. So it is really a like I mean, it's funny. Every 10 years we end up in class together in one form or another. Yeah. It's funny. But look, oh, we should really talk about snowflake. So it's right. yeah, but well not snowflake, but like the the writing of it is like, so you're talking about this kind of magic stuff. So I read it and I was like, do you know there's this film? It's not a great film, but it's called Unbreakable with mm -hmm. Bruce Willis. Right. And it's kind of about this guy who doesn't know he's a superhero. So he's just living a normal life and like just weird things kind of happen and he just doesn't understand it. And by the end of the film, that's what it is. And I was kind of like, with this book, I was like, I don't know, 
it's like it's clearly like it's a family of wizards <laughs> but they don't know it because they're in Kildare and they're farmers yeah so they just keep self-harming <laughs> you have no idea what's going on yeah so it's like totally magical yeah but they have no control over it and I don't know I just like I don't know how you did it because it's really funny and it's really I don't know I don't know. The, it doesn't make any sense to me that anyone would say it's not about the magic or not. The ma but the when I say magic, I want it. It's you know magical realism. Like they're like, oh, there's twenty thousand butterflies. This is much more local. This yeah. is like based. This is more like folklore and stuff like that. But it's very like it's the kind of magic that I grew up with because like I would say my dad's very like practical, down to earth guy. And any time that music or music, any time that magic popped up. It was like a very practical thing. So he was like, like my brother, like had he got ringworm off the off the calves, and uh, my dad was like, oh yeah, sure, just go get the cure for that. Yeah, like just like in the same way that we'd like send him to the pharmacy or something. Yeah, and and I was like, hang on, hang, what? And like, why is this? Yeah. Like something that we just all or like say there's a sick calf and like bring someone that's the cure for. Sickness yeah. of calves or whatever, or the um the guy there's a guy who lives down the way from us who when he puts his hands on electric fences, no matter what the voltage, he just doesn't get. He's like, it's a bit warm, but but that's it. Like and I was like, he's what? well grounded. He? <laughs> he's so well grounded. <laughs> and, and the same guy is a diviner as well, and I didn't even I didn't even like my dad like he. He wouldn't say it like he was just like, oh yeah, sure, that's just that's just the way. Sure, you've gone now from being like, ah sure, it's all a mess forward to being like, so anyway, one time <laughs> <laughs> and he chewed and that was, a, that was the fastest turnaround I've ever heard. No, like, all May stuff, like May, yeah. May, like she's probably the character that I have most like of an affinity with because like Whoa. Yeah, like she's completely mad and she's like yeah. a projection of how I would see myself if, if it got really, really bad. Yeah. Um, which I should never say if I ever want a job again. Right. Uh, <laughs> That's too late now. It's too late. No, it's not like too bad. You can't bury it. <laughs> but um, whenever anybody's saying like, oh yeah, you're like, you're, you're a Debbie though. Um, I'm like, no, but me. <laughs> you were a Debbie. You're probably more yeah, Debbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but the like, goal is to be Billy, is it? Really? <laughs> yeah, the goal, the goal. <laughs> to be or to Billy. <laughs> that, in your book, that's low stakes still. <laughs> Very low stakes. <laughs> but like with, with me, I gave my dream obsession to her. Yeah. Because I had such a massive dream obsession that was like, do you know, like the reason why everyone said boo with the dreams is yeah. because I had like spilled it out into the rest of, of the novel. Yeah. And so much stuff that was happening that was like just interfering with a lot of like what essentially is a, re a realist book and it was like messing it up so I just like boxed it all off gave it to Maeve literally put her in a prison in the tabernacle yeah. room and um and there's there's not that many scenes with Maeve and she doesn't really have a lot of dialogue either and I found it really really difficult to write her yeah um but there's a there's a kind of like yeah, that's that's kind of how I dealt with um, the magic. Just like try to like hide yeah. it as much as possible, and yet there was a lot of self harm in myself. It just yeah, but I mean yeah, but it's it's I I mean what I, I there's many things I love about the book, but one of the things that I love is like you kind of don't dwell on it. You're like anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway next, okay. and it was like that is very refreshing. But it's like, just a refreshing way of dealing with the level of. It's kind of how Irish society works, though. Okay. Like, there's so much tra trauma in so many families, mm -hmm. and we're like, I'm not sure we'll go to the pub. You don't think that's kind of good? I'm I getting to that. I think that's kind of good now. I've I kind of gone around to be like, we should all talk about our problems. And I was reading your book, and I'm like, these guys are hilarious. Leave <laughs> <laughs> <Please> them all. <laughs> They're all on holiday together, like nothing's being resolved. And you're like, this is a great family. Like, you know? Yeah, nothing is resolved. Um, I mean that. I don't. What I, uh, so that's not, in the novel, you kind of have like, so it is like, there's no, it's like, and then I understood that my mother had always loved me. It's like, a series of events happening, these kind of breakdowns happen. And then there's 
it's more like a seasonal thing, like George Eliot or something. And then like mm. someone gets a partner, they go on holiday, they enjoy like a, a, a part of the beach. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I just, I was like, that's, I loved that. But I don't know. I, I haven't, I haven't even seen that in a while. That kind of like, you don't have a clean, like she's 18 when the book starts and she's 19 when it finishes, is she? No, oh, she's 18 as well. Yeah, so yeah. She, it's just like a year in the life. A year, of, half a year, yeah. But it does feel like a vast emotional journey, but it's not a clean one. Yeah. There's no, that's when I say when it's not resolved, I'm not like, she didn't finish the book. <laughs> 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 not, I don't mean that. No, 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 I know, I know. Um, I didn't read, like, that's because I couldn't do that. I couldn't, like, it didn't seem emotionally true yeah. for any of the characters to have these, like, yeah. Like, but like the only thing that I was really um unsure about is um spoiler alert, um Billy's breakdown and his yeah. um like I didn't want that to be uh it came as a shock to me. That was a shock. That was the biggest shock in the book. Though. Yeah, and but I didn't want it to be um like just shoved in there for like a kind of like, okay, so here's the climax and yeah. then you know, and it, it um and it was something that came fairly late in in the process as well. Um and that that it doesn't isn't really um resolved either. Um <laughs> but um yeah, that, that well, was something it, like, it's very touching though, because he really is trying to resist the family curse or whatever it is. Like he is, and it is then kind of yeah, I, like I, I think feel, he needed to fall at some point because yeah. he's completely white knuckle in it. And everyone loves Billy. But like he's a bit of a prick, like yeah. in in the way that like he handles his like he's a control freak. Like yeah. he thinks that he knows best for Debbie. Uh, he doesn't want her to have any sort of like a healthy relationship with May because he's just like completely signed her off as completely yeah. insane. And he has complete financial control over like May stuff as well. Yeah. So and he makes her go to the dole. Yeah. <laughs> like he he makes her draw draw the dough and then he just like keeps it for himself everyone's like why how does Billy like um like afford all this stuff well like he's stolen it from yeah. Dave, you know and uh, so there's like a there's a certain um he, he's definitely like quite knuckling it and ignoring all of like the family trauma and and so he had to he had to fall at, at some point and for it to really reach a a crisis point so. yeah and then they to he totally doesn't want to talk about it afterwards no that's great i love that <laughs> i just i haven't seen but that's his character a, but like, it's, yeah but it's mature writing like it's so brilliant so mature no but i mean it is, but i don't mean you're mature i didn't say, say that <laughs> but i'm just saying like that is like that is that's it's brave because like i mean way more than the dreams you'd be like oh my god she's actually gonna do it she's gonna do she's gonna do an irish ending where it's like he just tried to hang himself it's like we don't care we're on the <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so fucking dark he's brilliant and then there is kind of like he's got a girlfriend and you're like oh maybe it will be okay you know yeah that's even that um because audrey is a bit mental as well uh so she fits right in and it's so unprofessional um and oh, oh yeah because she is a she's not how is she unprofessional go on can, she's so unprofessional like debbie stays the night in, in her house yeah like that's breaking a that's breaking uh, a boundary she shouldn't like she you're shouldn't pretending to be more normal now <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> i i love i love the storyline between billy and audrey it's yeah. one of the the things that i couldn't get down on the page because he brings her out to dinner, oh my but God. they've been in love with each other for years. Yeah. He's never, and they've lived li literally across the road from each other. Yeah, and they just like see each other at mass and stuff, and like they both love each other. But like he's just too afraid of like, And they were in the same class. And they were in the same class in school, so they know each other really, Which really well. Which would be like twelve people in that school, right? yeah, in the class. Was yeah, there. yeah. So like it's, I, I, I really, really wanted to write it, but I was like, you can't because it's, it's first person. Yeah. Narration. So. It's a spin off. Yeah, that's a spin off. Well, no, but I thought it was very romantic and nice. And it was like, I don't know. I, was, I, I mean, I was told, like, I mean, I'm very moved by it anyway because, because I know the area and stuff like that. But when did it become clear to you, like, that it was going to be like Kildare, Derry, 
you know, was that just, it was just had to be that way? It, it just there's had to be your home? There's a scene, um, yeah, there's a, um, Marion Hill is near me. We call it Marion Hill because Marion lives at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very original. Um, but there's kind of like a really like pretty um, view from the top of that. And it's like a road going down into the village in Newtown. And there's a bend in the road. And uh, I had already written a scene about a car crashing into the, their yeah. wall. And that's exactly when I when I imagined the dream in the car crash, that's the road that I imagined. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they just they live in that bend where there's no house. And then the village in Newtown is like it's classic church, graveyard, school. And I was like, and then there's a pub that was closed in. So it, it was great because I could use that pub and nobody could say that it was anywhere yeah. because it's it's closed in. And when it was open, like nobody really went to it anyway. So was it ever open when you were? No. Was... Well, it was, it was open when I was an adult, but um, like for like I think we won the we won a a, a final catching uh, the football team won final. Yeah. And, and they, they were like, to... fucking, this is the gold mine now. <laughs> They're going far and wide. <laughs> this, is how, this is how they have to buy their own drink uh, for the pub to sell back to them because they had no drink and they hadn't enough That's drink. In the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, but uh, it was really, it was really handy because I was like, uh, you, like, nobody, yeah. nobody can say that it's that. Uh, yeah, but you haven't gotten any of that. I think people just accept Irish no, writers nobody, what they want. Yeah, nobody cares. Yeah. Genuinely nobody cares. When I published my first book, they, I kept hearing about this book called The Value of Peeping Windows. Have you heard of this? Yeah, is it's it Nile Williams? Is that? I don't know. It's a Mead book, though. It's 1932. West Mead, is it? Oh, no, I think, well, it's Celebrator Mead there. You could call it. It was super quickly. <laughs> no, I, I'm really... <laughs> Well, that's the minor appendage to me. <laughs> um, All right. But your man, he wrote about the town and they, um, they, I mean, they sent him death threats, they ran him out of town and he wrote a very negative book about the town. They were like, you know, when I wrote my first book, they're like, are you worried? I was like, no, there's nothing. Nobody reads. No. <laughs> it's fine. And it's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you can live completely happily in Newtown for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. They're like, that's nice. They're like, that's nice. You've written a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like for a yeah. Yeah, this like they're... you can always tell people who actually have read the book though, because oh. they look to a bit different. Uh, oh. whereas the people who like pretend to read the book and they're like, it's great, you're like, well done. Whereas like the other way it is a bit dark and like yeah. like lots of um trauma in it. And they, they look at me like <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask you about that because I read this and I found it yeah. hilarious. And I found it to have a very kind of fucked up, dark sense of humour, which I really, really enjoyed. And then I see everyone's like so relatable. But it's like this nice, like, Trini now, and then they're like, what's it like being a young woman in Trini? I'm like, this is mad. How is it being marketed in this way? Yeah, I mean, that's something that like, I just, I kind of have no control over. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, I kind of leaned into the whole I'm just a nice girl. <laughs> 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 I felt like that was the easiest thing to do. Um, and I'm always kind of like, I'm like, I look like this. Um, I look normal enough. I don't know what you mean. Like, do you wish you had black eyeliner or something? Like, you know. No, but like, I, always, I always kind of like, I like being, I, I don't know. I, like, I don't think I'm any sort of like punk. <laughs> And you're a bit punk, no? Uh, like, uh, I like, like, I don't know. I, I don't, I didn't realise that I come across like that until, until I saw myself in papers and I was like, do you know what I like that? Or like, isn't she? Like, what, tell me what that's like. What do you mean? Like a nice, like, the, like a nice girl kind of thing. <laughs> He's a nice girl. Yeah, yeah. Did it's, you read the book? <laughs> <laughs> but that's like, even like when you're doing interviews, like the amount of like I'd say about one percent of interviews is talking about the book, yeah. and then mm. like ninety nine percent is just like, so what's your advice to other writers? And I'm like, I haven't a, like I'm a, I'm an absolute car crash. Yeah. I don't know how this is. <laughs> don't look, don't look for me. 
pay for productivity <laughs> tips. Like I'm currently in the middle of my set, like trying to write my second novel, trying to pretend that everything's okay. Um, I hope like the older I get, like I'll get a bit cooler. Oh, what? <laughs> That's how it works. I think yeah. so. I think like maybe people will take it a bit seriously then. Like I don't mind not being taken seriously. Do you think, they, do you think you're not taken seriously? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But like, I, I don't think, I don't think I've any control over it. What narrative do they put you in? Uh, I don't know. No. And I think the more that I concentrate in that, the more like I, I'm going on the other end of the scale. Like, like you say, nobody cares about you. You know. Yeah. No, they don't really. And like the. They want to have a nice time and ask you. They want, you know. Yeah, and like they have their own agendas and stuff. And you know. Yeah. Just like, but like even the aspect of like dairy farming. Yeah. Like the dairy farming is to some degree horrific like uh, most of my family are well not most of my family like my family come from dairy farmers mm -hmm. you know my mother would have grown up like that my uncles still are dairy farming and to me dairy farming and i did it when i was a kid it just meant dodging shit like literally just like <laughs> shit splattering all over your face and you've included this stuff in your book and then they're like oh you're, you're oh it's nice to be a farmer you're like, you're like i don't know <laughs> i don't know it's not like i don't know how to, it's like it's real it's real cult, it's like real culty stuff but i don't know it was weird uh they, like getting into the um farmer's journal that was weird because it was the only the only way that i would get into it now you get the respect my dad and my my brother are like what like why is she like they, they thought that I was using the farm for a bit, like, like they did and they didn't, but like, so, like, someone, some papers asked, could they take a picture of me, like, on the farm? Yeah. And I was like, absolutely not. But like, that's kind of like the angle that people are, yeah. are going for, like, dairy maid sort of thing. And I'm like, I don't do any work. Dairy maid, you can have a little. Yeah, the little frills. Yeah, the little <laughs> outfit, <laughs> a little headband or something. But like, I'm talking about this, like, I don't know that it's a thing. It's not really a thing. That's not a thing, but I mean, like, I don't know. Because, like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't maybe I should just. Anymore. No, but I mean, just riffing. It's like, <laughs> but the book is like, it is, I don't, I actually don't know how you did it in the sense of it's a thing. And you're like, okay, it's coming of age. And she's like, she doesn't fit in. And then, like, there's this pile of, for be lack of a better word, like magic. And then there's all this humor. And then there's like this thing. And I've never seen this in a book. And it was just like, and then the way you play it is in any other book, it would be the main event, but you just have it as something in it. Like, so there's a bit, spoilers again, but who cares? We're all grown ups here. There's like, she doesn't know if he's a virgin or not. Yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. I know loads of people, not loads of people. That's a thing that happens. Which is like, especially with our generation, which is much more binge drinking and this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then like her reaction to it is like, oh, jeez, <laughs> I get that shaked in. <laughs> and it was just like, it was so funny. And then it was really sad. And then it was funny again. And I was like, I just didn't know, I don't know how you do it. I, I, I submitted that chapter to, uh, like, or a version of it to, or just that idea that, that women, like, sometimes don't know if they're yeah. virgins or not, like because of binge drinking and black ice or whatever. And there was like, there was a guy, like the lone guy in the, in the class who just like, well, that's just not believable. And all of the women just like, turned him. <laughs> 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 uh, <yeah. laughs> but like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it took me a while to make that sound. Um, like it's, yeah, it took me a while to figure out what to do with that because there was a version of the book where she got pregnant and I was just like no I don't I can't be dealing with that thing <laughs> <laughs> because like with the with all the problems I was like um you can't really ignore ignore a pregnancy uh oh, I mean, you stab at it, I'd she, say. Was. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah um but yeah that was that's always been like her character from the from the very get-go and like yeah, I'm glad that you, not that I'm glad that you know, but like women that, yeah. like, have been, but like, it's not something that's talked about an awful lot. And just like sexuality in general, like, I don't know, we come from so much like sexual, like shame and, and yeah. stuff in, in Ireland, but we pretend 
to be liberated when, yeah. when we're really not. I um, do. I, yeah, I think the opposite. Really? Yeah, I know. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like living with my parents and stuff. No, <laughs> we're just like, sure, look, we're ready to college. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> There was, I was at, I was at a college yesterday, it was last time it was sunny, I was in Great Norman and I took my top off, because it was very sunny, I wanted to tan. And the guy came and goes, you have to put your top on, this is a college. I was like, what? A college? Really? Where literally everyone is drunk and trying to have sex all the time. <laughs> no. Anyway, sorry, that's not, but I meant, I meant this virgin thing is like, I meant it's like, I still, I don't know how you did it, because like, it's funny, it's dark, it's funny, it's dark. There's this pile up of these things that I haven't seen represented in novels, but if I would see it, it would be like really heavily done or like, so I suppose the question I'm going to ask you is like, I do think this is a different book from any book published in Ireland in ages. And I mean that in a really good way. Yes. When did you know it was good? When did you know you were onto something? I was, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, do you know when a thing is good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a very specific thing I was buzzing I was um uh milking with dad yeah and I had the idea to put all of the dreams in like into Maeve mm -hmm. and to stop it like spilling over from from everything else and I was like because for a long time Debbie and Maeve were very like melded in like their characters were like non-distinct like Debbie was a lot more mad than then me like yeah. then she then she turns A to B and there's so much like to sort out. I can't remember if that was a specific thing, but I just remember being in the milking part of dad, and I turned around and I was like, it's gonna it's gonna be good. Yeah. And uh, and he started crying. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, because like I had moved home and they were really worried about me. Like like I, I was I was milking guys with dad, but like it was. Like I was the person like in the family to be kind of looked after a bit. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like he was just delighted that like something something was going right for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Even just like mood wise. And mom always said it to me, like she'd always know when I was having like having a bad day writing because I'd literally be like a ghost wandering around the house. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like I'd bounce down and make like a, a cup of coffee. She's like, okay, it's, it's going well. Yeah. Or whatever. But there was several moments like that. Yeah. I think the last moment was um I went to see Little Women in the in the cinema, and I had the idea for uh, like for Billy having a, having a breakdown. And I uh, rather than rather than being really upset about it and shocked, like I kind of was, but I, I came home and I was like, "Yes!" I know, there's nothing better than when you realise a character has to die, and you're like, "I fucking die!" It's like just. <laughs> just lethally taking out your noose. <laughs> this is going to be so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, went back to see, I went back I got so much like a buzz out of that that I kept on going back to see Little Women. And my family had a. Uh, Timothy <laughs> Chamelay had nothing to do I love being the but uh, I saw like like after the fourth time they staged an intervention, they're like, please. <laughs> it's fun to go to the cinema four times. That was absolutely fun. But I absolutely bawled my eyes out every time. Yeah. It was, All right. Well, you know, there are still <laughs> some differences between the genders, I suppose. But I think, you know. Uh, what, this, okay, so I didn't want to ask you about like mental health and stuff like this because I think there is so much in the book. But the book is definitely like a coming of age thing mm -hmm. to some degree and you have mentioned that it, it's like it was part of your process of I don't know it's it? the only conscious that, like when I would think about what I consciously wanted to write about because you have very little control over what you want to write. like you have you think you have an idea and then you yeah. sit down at the at the desk and all of a sudden you're writing about hedgehogs and, and, that. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like what is, what is going on yeah. like so much of it is subconscious yeah whereas the only conscious thing that i wanted to write about was like was like mental health or uh, like she's a broad, broader term but it's like sadness yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh and like just like dark times yeah <laughs> And it is like, I don't know, like mental health is that, I don't know, this word, the word is like, these guys, they seem to be like cosmically misfitting mm -hmm. into their bodies and their space and their time. Like, I don't know if like talking will 
I don't know. I mean, they, it seems to me like there's something very fundamentally wrong with these guys, but not in a way that like, oh, they're fucked. It's over. Yeah. But just like there is, a, it's very moving in the end when you're kind of like, there's no silver bullet, but it's kind of okay. Yeah. And like, I, I, I thought that was And it will impressive. continue to go up and down. Yeah. You know, like there is no like happy ever after. It's just, you know, like at the end of The Witches in Rodal. Yes. Where he, like in the movie, they turn him back into a boy. And in the book, he stays in mouse. And it's just him, and they renovate the house for the, the grandmother and him. Yeah. And it's just him and his grandmother facing death together. And yeah. I was just like, that is beautiful. That's what we're all doing <laughs> in, in our little mouse houses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know. That's like, that was like my, I don't know. That, yeah. I didn't want any kind of. But that is, and that's even stories for children. Like, they should maintain that element of. You know, not every dream will come true all the time because, you know, sometimes you won't even have one. And it's weird for like Irish fiction, which is so sad and dark so often, they're still like, it's the one that got away. If I was with her or him, it would be fine. Whereas I think there's much more in this is like, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> it's just another fucking thing to deal with. Um, so it is, it's, but with this book, like, did you. I mean, I know you spent a long time writing it because I remember you telling me like six years ago about it yeah. and stuff like this. And that. What's it like being letting it go? Yeah, it was hard. Um, like when I when I got the book deal and it was a two book deal, I was like, well, obviously it's going to be sequel. And then the publishers didn't really want that. And I also didn't want to, I didn't want to screw up. Like I didn't want to bring them out of that kind of kind of e equilibrium that I left them at. Um, I think I need, if I'm going to write about these characters again, I think I need a little bit of distance yeah. from, from them to go back in. Um, so I thought like the the worst thing about it is is finding new characters because I was really comfortable with these. Yeah. Um, and uh don't really get to a certain point in like in your 20s, like late 20s, early 30s, where you're like, I have enough friends. Like I've, I've, I'm, I don't want any more. Like I've got these ones, and yeah. it felt like that with the characters. Like yeah. I, I have these characters; they're, they're the ones that I love. Yeah. Nobody else, please. But yeah. then, you have to write another book, and I don't, didn't want to. You could just do like the what, like who is it, like the Jeeves and Wooster thing. Just well, like <laughs> BGO for like, for, yeah, for forty <laughs> books. Just... Or like Marilyn Robinson goes in uh, with uh, she had Gilead, and then she wrote like. Three other books from different like different characters' perspectives. So I tried to do a book from um briefly, when I say briefly, five minutes at the computer, five seconds maybe. And I was like, no, from May's point of view. And I was like, absolutely not. Um, but yeah, it's been I'm really, I'm actually really proud of it. I'm yeah. I'm okay with letting it go now. And I like I like talking about the characters with, yeah. with people, even though it's really weird. They are, I felt reading it, I felt like in a good way like I felt like I lived with them for years and then when I got to the well, end I of the did. book I know you did <laughs> but I felt like that yeah and I didn't yeah. <laughs> I, read, I read it in like three or four days but like I don't know there's so much of them in it and then like this is why I was asking she's 19 at the end of the book it was like but that just was there for them with whatever diegetically or whatever I was there for months in their lives yeah. but I was like I know these guys yeah inside out yeah and then I was kind of like who's the psychotherapist Audrey was Audrey yeah. yeah I was like and I'm about to get to know her and then I didn't and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then you're kind of yeah. but I wear all my guys got <laughs> so you really did do that like the characters are just like you're like even Xanthi who would be like she's a type of person <laughs> and she's, I was even by the end I was like well I hope it all I hope Xanthi's all right <laughs> you know what was I, I will I'll open it up to any questions because we've been talking but what was the what's Xanthi to Debbie in this kind of thing like because well Xanthi is everything sorry what were you going to say no I just like what it because they seem to be like opposites in some sense what's going on there it was an interesting yeah. thing yeah so like uh, Xanthi is like what Debbie wants. Uh, so Xanthi's like very sophisticated, very beautiful. Everyone really likes her. Mm. And she's got no like in Debbie's in Debbie's mind, 
she's a lot of like social power over over people and she's kind of self, she seems self-made and independent um and and yeah and it's also like a reflection of you know really like when your friends I had so many friends that like I just found like I was so jealous of them because I was like you're so beautiful and you have all this I hate you. yeah but like with female friendship it kind of is like that yeah. and then I had a couple of like revelations in my 20s where like my friends who were like really gorgeous and I thought that they had their shit together came to me and they're like I feel like I feel like yeah. like things aren't going well and I was like, like oh, I'm so, so no inside I'm <laughs> Inside, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was kind of angry at them because yeah. I was like, but you have you so much going for you. Like, why but she says that there's a there's a scene like, where but you're beautiful, or... yeah. Like, see, like there's a scene with um with like Xanthi says that she's depressed to Debbie, and Debbie's like, come on, like you don't have half the shit that I've yeah. got to deal with. Um, but there's something really um really like uh fragile about Xanthi and yeah. also. She's a really good friend to Debbie. Yeah. She's a really good friend and uh, and she's miserable. She's like everything. She's, when you say she's the type of person, she's like sort of like the girl on Instagram where you're like, yeah. your, your life is perfect. What but she does do? come through actually. But yeah. she doesn't have, she doesn't have a family that like care about her at yeah. all really. Like her mom's a bit of a bitch and her dad, like she doesn't really have a relationship apart from him sending her money. Money is another issue with mm. Like Xanthi has a lot, like she's a lot of money in comparison mm -hmm. to Debbie. And she's living in Dublin and um and yeah, money isn't an issue, whereas with Debbie it really is. Yeah. Um and so for me, Xanthi kind of like really annoyed, like I, I brought her in to reflect all of the things that Debbie didn't have. Yeah. And then as I spent as they spent more time together. The more I kind of like got to like I really had a grow for for Xanthi by yeah. the end of it because she has everything that society um thinks like a a young woman should should have yeah. and yet she has nothing as well she's really really lonely and um, she's in love with her best friend who's gay and like her like she didn't have a relationship with that the boy. Who stood up back mass. The nameless boy. The nameless boy. The female <laughs> boy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> played by Timothy Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Or no, it would be like you never see him. Or something like I felt like you never saw him. Ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like there he is. It would be like that. Yeah, yeah like outside of his, yeah, outside yeah, yeah, the yeah, ride. Like, oh, this guy. Yeah. But like he brought here for some sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's glowing. Like the room just lights up. Yeah, yeah, and then you could say Timothy Chalamet played. But she did. Xanthi, um, Xanthi also another thing she does is she really brings out Debbie's resilience. Like Debbie is one of the most resilient characters I've read. That isn't like it's not about her resilience. It's not in the sense of like there are books where it's like look at this thing I overcame and did. Whereas you kind of do just stay with Debbie. And then like 200, 300 pages in, you're like, she's really fucking dealing with a lot oh, here. Like the way she takes care of her mother and then Billy and then back again. And there's no real question about it. And you're kind of seeing just this vast undercurrent of strength that I don't think Xanthi possesses in the same way. I mean, it was, I, I thought that really came out very nicely in their relationship. Thanks. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Here, no. I suppose um, I love the book, and one of the things that I was most interested in is obviously you're saying that kind of there'd be misery like central to it. And if you were kind of protected with Debbie in that way, like at the minute, you said you're in over six years or so. So there's been a lot of books that have come out where, you know, the sad hot girl books, as they're called. Yeah. And we're <laughs> <laughs> and there seems to this. be huge <laughs> investment in that, in that kind of really. Um, often attractive like young woman who's really sad and like horrible to herself sometimes horrible to be around her yeah and if you were kind of worried as to how that would be received or if you'd be god not implicated sorry, no, <laughs> and sorry. No, no, yeah. you know what I mean if you if if you if you were like worried about like what does it mean for the book that she has such a hard time but do you get me that's a really interesting question yeah uh probably another reason why 
I brought in Xanthi. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, she's hotter. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, the, she's the shield for Debbie. Oh, yeah. I'm like, great, yeah, it's upside. Yeah. I only realized now. Like, great, the guy that Xanthi fancies or whatever, uh, he says that he's, he's like, well, like, guys come over to talk to Xanthi and they get with you. <laughs> um, I did, I never really thought about, um, to be honest, I never really thought about that. Um, and I don't, like, I don't think that that, uh, when, when you're writing, at least, I don't think that that uh, form of thinking is helpful in, in creating. Yeah. And with, like, in the, in the way that, like, the book is marketed and stuff, and, yeah, there's, like someone sent me um someone sent me uh, a Goodreads review that was like well, it's one of the most uh, more lighthearted sad girl novels. <laughs> 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 I'm never understand. Like this is the thing is like because it must be because you're it's a trend or something or it's like it's a for a long time Trinity wasn't in it at all. I think the last year or so I put I put Trinity in and and uh, and Xanthi. But then, yeah, to answer your question, um, I didn't really think about that at all. I think uh, deeper, like, part of me thinks that there's a reason why there's so much um, uh, sad girl, hot sad girl <laughs> stories. Because there are so many hot and sad girls. <laughs> there are so many hot and sad girls. That's um, that gonna be, like, is that gonna be like a course on like, <laughs> Like Arthurian like literature, Kate <laughs> Lawrence, pop sad girl lit. Um, I mean, and just old men in robes. Don't, <laughs> don't <laughs> tip <taste> it. <laughs> but like we, uh, I think it's just like a by, like a byproduct of young women being taken, like their literature being taken seriously. Okay. Now, I think, because um, there are like hot sad man <laughs> stories, but they're not. Seen or marketed in that way. Um, I'm really not sure how to answer that question. It is a brilliant question though. But I suppose like, I mean, I'm not going to answer it on your behalf, but there is like, you you write these books and the, you, you're like, this is about life and everything. And then you put it out there and people are like, this is like this. Yeah. You know? The comparison comes after publication. Yeah. And like, Which people you can try, have. I really have no control over. And like, I, like when I had it edited, like when I was going over and editing it and stuff, it, it was always, it was already too late. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was too lazy to change anything. Uh, <laughs> so by the time you're like, your conscious mind kicks mm -hmm. in. And that's why it's so difficult answering interview questions and like really like, and questions like this, because it's not like part of it, is, like it isn't my job to think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, my job is to write and other people like, and then people like can say what they want, basically. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Comments? Comments. Yoga poses. Acidness. <laughs> 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 um well, I mean, I can think that's that's our hour, is it? Yeah. Is there anything? Else, I don't know. I think we come, I feel like I went a bit rambly there, but I think it. No, I think it's really good. Yeah. Well, I think we'll be all right. It is a brilliant book, Thanks so much. and I'm not going to ask you about your next one because you just take your time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read this. I actually might read. Like I did find. I'll like, re-release it. Yeah, we are just yeah, <laughs> now with expanded Zambi in this <laughs> section. <laughs> Hotter, <laughs> sadder, <laughs> sadder, <laughs> snowflakeier. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, to our participants, any questions in the chat? No. I think we scared them all away. We did, we did yes. Okay, thank you to our <laughs> online participants as well. And thank you very much to Louise for Thanks joining us. And thank you, Stephanie, for hosting it. Thanks, Thanks guys.